As you know, I'm on a permanent mission to help you become a better investor. But sometimes that means we got to go off the tape. Check in with privately held companies that are right at the vanguard of a major new trend. Take the alternative consumer lending business. For ages, it was difficult, incredibly difficult, to get access to credit from anywhere but a bank or a loan shark. These days, there are many companies that will lend you money, even if you don't have the so-called traditional perfect credit scores. Take a firm. Here's a private company that lets you get instant financing for purchases of up to $10,000, which you can pay back over the next 3, 6, 12 months. They've partnered with a host of stores and e-commerce platforms, so you can use a firm to basically apply for a microloan with clear, straightforward terms. We're going to talk more about that when you need to buy something. And the company's had a lot of success with people who don't have perfect credit scores, especially the millennials. So let's take a closer look with Max Levchin. He's the CEO of a firm. He also happens to be the, uh, one of the co-founders of Kramer Faith PayPal. Mr. Levchin, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. I've seen you, Max. You were doing something different in an industry which a lot of people regard as, frankly, shady. You are bringing transparency and democratization to credit. Uh, how's it working? It's great. Uh, it's pretty unbelievable what we can do if you just stay honest and keep honest. Now, a lot of people, I think, feel that the way that the credit card companies have made money was to not really tell you how much you're uh, going to be paying, or be so grateful that you even got them that you get to use their money, but that's not a firm strategy. No, it's the exact opposite of a firm strategy. One of the things that happened in 08, the now of age generation, the millennials, witnessed their parents get ripped apart by the very banks who were supposed to stand behind them and have their back, and so they emerged into their prime as financial consumers with a very clear view of you don't trust the banks and you do not take credit cards out because you don't know what things are going to cost you, which creates a huge opportunity for companies like Affirm to be the honest actor that starts by saying, here's the true cost of ownership of any financial product you might get from us. But we've always heard for the credit card companies, and to take the uh, devil's advocate position, if they didn't have those extreme fees, if they didn't have the high rates, they wouldn't be able to handle the uh, offset the losses that they always have. Um, I think that's just looking for the easy way out. You, okay. you price everything in and you make a lot of money in the process. The uh, classic stat that I always trot out uh, for a lot of these credit card companies, something like half the profits come from late fees. That is not, late fees. that's right. So it's not exactly just aligning. Huge. Well, it's more like misaligned was the interest of your consumers. So you, you want them to be late so you can make more money? That seems wrong. So, uh, I mean, typically would not be expected that my credit card company would somewhat be my friend. I mean, a firm is taking a stance that actually benefits both the merchants and the customers. It's not adversarial. Right. And in fact, I think that's the only way to be going forward. Um, we bring new buyers, people that are window shoppers, turn into actual purchasers by extending credit to people that either opt out of credit cards entirely or cannot get a credit card. And merchants get a whole new set of buyers, and people get a whole new set of things that they want to consume. Well, why should I think that Max and his team know more about how to assess somebody's credit and someone's, someone's reliability than these great banks that have many, many years of history of doing this? Um, they do, but they are deeply rooted in technology that looks a little bit like a green screen computer. And uh, that was all done in the 50s and the 60s. Today's life moves a lot quicker. The FICO score, which is the way most banks assess credit worthiness, is a great tool, but it was invented in 1983, if I remember correctly. It's been roughly the same for a very long time. Meanwhile, in the last 15 or so years, I spent my time figuring out how to uh, get quicker and better at this very risk management stuff, um, starting with PayPal. Well, well, but how would, how do you, what, without being too proprietary, give it away, what are some of the, the inputs that you have, say, even social media, that makes it so that you have a better snap assessment? Um, you know, there's actually no secret sauce. People no. always look for a secret sauce. There isn't one. There are two distinct technical problems. One is identity and fraud management. Are you who you say you are? Okay. And that's a challenging problem. There's lots of really fascinating stuff we can do there. If you're typing your name into a web form so quickly that you're probably cutting and pasting it, you're not you. You wouldn't be pasting your own name into a web form. It sounds silly, but that's an interesting signal. The second problem is credit underwriting, the actual figuring out of do you have the money to pay the loan we're issuing to you back and do you have the intention of doing so? And there is really no secret sauce there. You need to understand what people have, what people earn, what their debt to income ratio is, and you build a model. The thing that you have to do as a new lender, as a, as a player, and as a, the, the new entrant, is you have to learn very quickly. Banks have had decades of advantage on looking at this stuff, and we don't, 
but we can learn a lot faster. Okay, so at JP Morgan, run by a smart guy, Wells Fargo, run by a smart guy, they are sure. listening right now, and I think they're probably the capital one. It's very smart guys. Yeah. And I think they're either saying, uh oh, we gotta be careful of a firm, or yeah, never mind, don't worry about that. I mean, do you ascribe to be Amazon of the credit card business? You know, I think they're saying neither. What I think they're saying is there's 93 million of these new consumers called the millennials. Right. And they're largely opting out of getting services from all the names you just mentioned. They are not a customer set of these large banks. They're basically saying, I don't want a credit card. I don't trust credit cards. I don't want one. A firm to them is the only option, not one of many. So I think they're saying, well, good for this guy. And the take up rate, given the fact that we don't see you, you know, we don't have uh, a Capital One ad campaign in every single uh, commercial on weekends. Um, no, we, we, we don't advertise so far at all. Our merchant partners are so excited about, we roughly increase their sales by something like 30% once we are fully integrated. And it primarily comes from these brand new buyers. They are very happy to promote us. And, and there's, but there's room for everybody because these other guys are very successful too. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think I'm cannibalizing anybody's business. I'm extending credit to people that deserve it and don't get it. That's a fascinating story. Okay, that's Max Levchin, co-founder and CEO of a firm. Frankly, if I were at one of these banks, I actually would be concerned. But I understand there's enough for everybody. Stick with me. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.